Hi, my name is Rich Boren and I'm the owner of Cruise RO Water and Technotics. And today I wanted to go over a quick easy test you can do to your Cool Blue compressor unit to verify that the reed valves in your compressor are still strong and healthy. Because what happens is perhaps you have a unit that you're troubleshooting, it's the compressor's running, you feel it vibrating, but it's not getting cold or it's a, you've bought a boat, it's a 15, 20 year old unit, you don't know the history of the system, it's not getting cold. One of the things you can easily rule out is the reed valve condition in your compressor because the compressor is doing basically two things but all at the same time if you follow. It's taking and putting high pressure on the high side of the expansion valve and then as the liquid refrigerant is injected into the holding plate, it's sucking back that refrigerant gas. And in order for the gas expansion to reach the proper low temperatures, the compressor unit needs to be able to suck that gas down to between 0 and 5 PSI. So if the reed valves in a compressor are worn out and you're not able to achieve the low pressure side uh, suction value of 0 to 5, well, then it's just never going to get cold. So if a worn out compressor could have a symptom of it's running and running and it's stable at 50 degrees in your box. Now, one thing to remember before you go down this road of testing this and worrying about it, the compressors we use on our systems are 200,000 hour compressor life. So if you have a few year old cool blue unit, the chances of your compressor wearing out are basically two, slim and none. It's just, it, if something's not right, it's running and not getting cold, it's a charge issue. It's not a dead compressor issue, even if your doc expert neighbor has told you it's time to replace it. So this is how you can test and rule that out. And in another video, we'll talk about troubleshooting the charge issue. But on this one, we're going to talk about a quick test, how to verify your compressor is healthy. So what you'll need, You'll need a 3 quarter and a 5 8 box in wrench. You'll then need a charge hose with the low pressure refrigeration gauge. This is the one we use. It has a needle piercing can valve on one side, a 3 8 Schrader valve port on another, low pressure gauge in the middle. This is the charge hose we supply. And if I'm going offshore somewhere cruising, I can buy the R134A refrigerant almost anywhere in the world in these pier style cans. Sometimes what I can't buy anywhere around the world is a charge hose that, that fits the compressor unit. So having one of these aboard before you head out is pretty handy. So what we're going to do first, the unit's turned off. Spin this around so we can see it. I've only connected one copper tube to illustrate this, but you'll normally have a quarter inch high pressure supply side line plugged in to the port just leaving the side glass. That's bringing liquid refrigerant to your holding plate. Then you have a 3 8 larger diameter copper tube bringing the gas back to the compressor. The low pressure side is the one we want to disconnect for this test because what we're going to do is by disconnecting one of the two lines, the low pressure, we're breaking the refrigeration loop. So when we turn this compressor on and put the low pressure gauge on, since there's no loop completion, it's going to suck against itself on a closed system. So we're going to be able to see with the gauge, are those reed valves inside the compressor healthy? Are they able to suck the unit down to the proper pressure? So the unit's turned off. This is very important that you do this properly so that you don't damage these fittings. You put the three quarter inch wrench on the swivel nut of the female, which is connected to the compressor unit. You put the five eighths box in wrench on the male refrigeration coupling. You're going to hold this constant while you spin away the female, which is made to spin. It spins off. Once you get it to where it's real loose, you can finish it with your hand. Now, when these are separated, there's a plunger in the female that depresses the male and refrigerant flows. As soon as they're together, 
internal o-ring seal them up so you're not going to lose any refrigerant when you do this test now that you've disconnected the feet the the low pressure side you're going to want to put on your charge your uh, your charge gauge so 3 8 Schrader valve take off the blue cap and let's say your cap isn't blue or your unit doesn't have a cap you always know what the low pressure side is on one of these units because it's the Schrader valve that just has a short little one or two inch stub going into the compressor the feet the the high pressure side on this unit is up here on the dryer receiver but on other units it's in the plumbing on some units there's some plumbing over on this side you'll see a red cap so we remove that we screw on the Schrader valve tighten it down tightly and we're also going to remember that in dealing with refrigerant products like this you want to be cognizant if liquid refrigerant was to squirt out of this unit somehow because you did something wrong or it malfunctioned anything that liquid refrigerant touches your eyes your finger your lips the tip of your nose you name it it's gonna freeze it so unless you have a mole you want to freeze off be very careful with this respect the laws of physics and what it can do you don't want to lose an eye over working on your refrigeration unit so you tighten that down properly again you've closed this piercing valve all the way if you don't and you tighten that on first you're gonna open up a pathway and if there's pressurized gas in here it's gonna come blowing out so before you connect that charge hose you wanna make sure this this piercing valve or the valve on your refrigeration manifold set is closed you wanna keep it closed you don't wanna suck air into the system either so now we're all ready to go we set the gauge out of the way so we can read it flip on the cool blue compressor unit and monitor the low pressure gauge it whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen within 20 to 30 minutes so if at the end of 30 minutes your low pressure side is reading a positive 5 or 10 well you're you either have an air leak and you're sucking air not being able to suck your pressure you didn't close that valve and now you got air in the system bad 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 or the reed valves on your compressor are indeed worn out. It's a 15, 20 year old unit. And I keep saying 15 to 20 years because if you got a 10 or younger year old unit, your reed valves aren't bad. So you don't really have to worry about this test. This is more for older units that are out there. So if you're on a good healthy compressor, you can actually suck the pressure down to a negative 15 or 20 PSI then you know your compressor's healthy. So if your unit's not cooling, the compressor's vibrating, but when you do this test, you get negative 15 or negative 20 on the low pressure side, then stop listening to the your compressor is dead uh, dock neighbors. It's perfectly fine. You have an issue with the charge or your expansion valve, and we'll deal with those in another video. But of course, I'm always available to answer any questions, to help, if you have any, so shoot me an email seven days a week. Of course, to, to get back to normal, you just un turn the compressor off again, disconnect the charge hose. To reconnect the hose, keep your compressor off, put the, where'd it go? It flew around. There we go. Put the mail fitting loosely by hand and start it a, a, a few turns then put your wrenches back on and tighten it back up and you're ready to go again so again if you have any questions i'm happy to help seven days a week you can go to our website at technoticsinc.com and you'll see my email address all over the website to send me questions for technical service all right have a good day and thanks for watching